Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. It's still Easter season, and so we begin with our uh, usual Easter proclamation. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The risen Lord. Someone who's alive and alive forever and gives us eternal hope. And so we have come together in the name of that Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving. To hear and to receive God's holy word. To seek the forgiveness of our sins. And to pray for the needs of this world. And by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. So we say together. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth will proclaim your grace. And let us worship the Lord. All, All the praise is in his name. <coughs> Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness. And you have brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day that you have made. And may we praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. And we come now to worship in song. So I invite you to stand as we sing hymn, hymn number 634, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling.
morning. Just a few uh, announcements to share with you uh, before we proceed uh, in our service. Uh, just to say, with regards to COVID and COVID restrictions, uh, our risk assessment team uh, have agreed uh, that, just to be clear, uh, masks are not mandatory. They are totally up to yourselves. So there's no uh, stipulation for you to wear them at all. If you don't want to, that's absolutely fine. Uh, we would prefer, we still hope that you would use the sanitizers on the way in and out uh, each morning. Uh, but, but aside from that, uh, and also our, our social distancing within the church will be lessening a wee bit, but we will still keep an element of that in uh, to keep certain people who would like that comfort still in place. Uh, just to remind those of the vestry, select vestry, we're meeting tomorrow night at 8 p.m. in the parish hall. Uh, next thing is this evening we have our Sunday evening service uh, and we have Stanley Kai with us from AWN, our board ministry. So uh, I'd love you to come along this evening uh, and hear Stanley speak uh, and uh, support the new service in that way. There'll be tea and coffee at the end as well. Uh, Julie will be there as well talking a bit about her work uh, in Belfast with the refugee community. So uh, if you come along support her. Uh, and enjoy a bit more fellowship together. Uh, I'd love you to come along to that. Our youth fellowship is on as well this evening. It'll just be straight after 7 p.m. in the parish hall. Uh, so that's for all secondary school children and you invite your friends. And we're thinking about exam pressures and exam stress at this time uh, and how God might want us to, to deal with that. Uh, just to also say next Sunday is our children's day service. Uh, this Sunday marks over the last Sunday of uh, Sunday school before the summer, uh, so there'll be it'll be an all age service with uh, a Children's Day theme, and we'll be hearing about thinking about uh, all that their, our children have been doing all, uh, through the year, uh, but also we I want to bless them and encourage them and the leaders in all that they do for us. So please, it'll be great to see a good turnout uh, next week as well in our Children's Day service here uh, at half eleven. I think that's all for the announcements. Thank you. Thanks, Dennis. Now we come to a more serious part of our service where we acknowledge our need to repent and ask forgiveness from God. Romans, the book of Romans says Christ died to sin once and for all, and now he lives to God. So this is an invitation to renew our resolve to have done with evil, to have done with evil, and confess our sins and penitence and faith. So we say together, O oh God, O oh God, our loving Father in heaven, we confess that we have sinned against you, we have broken your commandments, we have often been selfish. And we have not loved you as much as you should. For these and all our sins, forgive us, we pray. Through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> and so may the love of God bring us back to himself. May, for, may he forgive us our sins. And may he assure us of his eternal life. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our collect for today. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death, to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory. To whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. So as we come to our reading of God's word, we say the following together. Your word is a lantern to my feet. And the light to my path. O oh Lord, your word is everlasting. It stands firm forever in the heavens. Let us then receive the word of the Lord. And may the light of your presence
The reading is from John chapter 13, beginning at verse 31. And this can be found on page 1082 of the Pew Bible. That's 1082. When he was gone, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself, and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thank Thanks be to God. God. Now Tommy is going to come and talk to our children. And after this, the children will go out to kids. Zone. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Can everyone can hear me? And this morning I'm going to talk about John 13, verses 35, 34 and 35. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciple, if you love one another. It's very clear that Jesus makes it very clear what it means to be a disciple. We must show love to others so that he can shine through us, and that can be very, very visible to, to all folks around us. I thought I wanted to look at the word disciple this morning. And I was going to get Dennis to spell it, but he admitted last week he couldn't spell Peugeot. So I thought, let's forget that one. So I thought, I'll just put it up on the board, or up on the screen this morning. So Jack, if you could put up the cycle, please. And what I want to do is just go through each letter and in turn. That'll help us remember what it means to be a disciple of Christ. So the first one is D. We need to be devoted to Christ. Oh, very small, is it? Uh, so we, we must walk with him. And we must show love to our brothers and sisters in the good times and the bad times. I is involved. We must get involved with each other, get involved with our churches, and get involved with our communities and show Christ's love to all. Can anybody think of what S would mean? Yes? Spirit. Spirit, yes. If we ask God, He is Spirit, will come into us and will keep us safe and give us peace. C, we must be Christ-centered. Everything we do at home, in school, at work, we must have Christ at the center of it. Very, very important here in church. I invite, as followers of Christ, we must invite others to see Jesus. And that should be our number one in our life. Can anybody think of what P means or stands for? Yes, anybody? Prayer. We must pray. Pray for each other. That must be that must be centered to everything we do. Pray for each other and show our love to each other. L is the easy one. Anybody think what L is? Yes. Yes. Love. love. Yes, exactly. Love everyone, no matter what happens in the good and the bad. Particularly if somebody's not nice to us at school or at work, we must love them no matter what. And the last one, E, is encourage. Each one of us should encourage each other to follow Christ and to love Christ and to love each other. So the next time you think, what does it mean to be a disciple of Christ? Remember the letters and the words. Let's encourage each other, let's love each other, and let's continue to pray for each other. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for each one of us here this morning. Lord, we pray that you'll help us soften our hearts so that we can love each other no matter what, even in difficult situations. 
We pray that we can show true discipleship when we leave this church this morning to the ones around us. Help us to encourage each, each one of us. In your name, we pray. And now the children can leave for kids. Please remember to pray for our children and pray for the leaders. It is so important the work they do to give children that deep foundation in what it means to know Christ. So thank you, Tommy, as well. Now, before Dennis comes to speak to us, we stand to sing our second hymn before the throne of God above. Please. Sing. <coughs> Us as we do that and 
May your Holy Spirit be with us as we seek to deepen it in our faith and be better followers and genuine followers of you. Guard my words and guard our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. So our setting in the lectionary has been unsurprisingly focused on the risen Jesus. Uh, he is alive. He's appearing to his disciples, reigniting their calling uh, to be fishers of men, to follow him, to tend his sheep, to be uh, before or because he is the good shepherd. And this reminder that uh, the sheep, his sheep, hear his call. Uh, we thought about that for us and for those who we reach out to, they hear his call to, they recognize his voice. The specific setting for the passage that Nigel read for us, uh, the lectionary brings us back to John 13. Uh, and it brings us back to the moment, or the, the, the evening before uh, Jesus' arrest. And it's just after uh, John 13, uh, he, he washes the disciples' feet, you remember that. And then Judas betrays him, decides to go off and betray him. And then we pick up the story uh, in verse 31. The first verse there says, when he had gone out, Jesus said, and the he that's referred to is Jesus himself. Someone who turns out not to be one of Jesus' sheep. Uh, <clears throat> but it, it is, or it was called, he was called to other things, you know, other than the good shepherd, it seems. Uh, maybe his heart was hard. Maybe he just had the wrong soil. There were weeds and tares, temptations maybe, that uh, grew up around him. We can only guess. But it's just after Judas leaves. And then he turns to his disciples, to his sheep, and he teaches them. And if you think about it at this moment, he is truly free to speak now. Uh, the last piece has been set in motion. Judas is off to betray him, and he will be arrested soon. So Jesus doesn't have to mince his words anymore. And he says very clearly who he is. So picking up in John 13 from verse 31 onwards. The Son of Man, he calls himself. That's the name that was given to the Messiah in Daniel 7 way back then. I will be glorified. And God is glorified in me. That is what is about to happen. I will be glorified and God will be glorified in me. The disciples don't see the cross yet. They can't see how that has anything to do with glorifying God. Why would they? But Jesus warns them, and I'm now in verse 33. But soon I will be gone and you can't come with me. Again, they can't get their heads around that either. Yet. But here is what he wants them to take away from this moment. Two verses that, that Tommy focused in on to, verses 34 and 35. This wonderful commandment, love one another, just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for, wonderful, for one another. A wonderful commandment. And so clear that I should just probably sit down, don't you think? Uh, we get it, do we not? You want to be a follower of Jesus, one who people recognise as such, then you follow this new commandment. You love one another, straightforward, wee bonds. I'm sure that's what you'd expect in the church. Valentine's Day, all year round. I'm sorry to say there's a wee bit more to it than that. I should say we all know any of us who have been married, that Valentine's Day all year round doesn't really happen that way, does it? Uh, there's a bit more to loving your husband or your wife uh, than roses and uh, those sorts of things. But there's more to it. Love one another is not actually a new commandment. When Jesus says the word new, it's not actually new. Because in Leviticus 19, we're told to love our neighbour as, as yourselves, as ourselves. No, this love is different again and it's new because of these words. Love one another just as I, just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. This love, this new commandment, this new love that he's talking about, 
This agape love is all about the love that Jesus showed us. It's compared to, held up alongside the love that Jesus showed us. So we know already that the, this pink and fluffy love, Valentine's Day love, uh, isn't really real love. We know that already. We know that from our own relationships. And then we could say there's this love that Jesus calls us to, which is very different again. It's very interesting, between this new commandment that's given, we have two characters that Jesus, uh, that John focuses on, I should say. Jesus is just betrayed by Judas. We could say, well, he never really loved Jesus in the first place. And we could score him and say, well, I'm different than Judas. You'd never catch me being the king. I can do better than him. I can love Jesus better than Judas. And then the character who comes straight after this new commandment, it's Peter. Back to this moment again, where we've been back to two or three times over the last few weeks. What time in Jesus has. Peter says, Lord, are you talking about leaving us? Where are you going? Jesus says, where I am going, you cannot follow. Lord, I will go, Peter says. Let me follow. I will lay down my life for you. We know that laying down your life is the ultimate example of love from Scripture. So before this commandment, just before we have one end, Judas, one end of the love spectrum, open betrayal, and then we have Peter at the other end of the love spectrum, willing to lay down his life. But we go down to verse 38, Jesus answered, Peter, will you lay down your life for me? It's a bit like that, do you love me? Truly, truly, I say to you, the rooster will not crow till you have denied me three times. So we have these two disciples, two examples, both finding it hard to love God, to love Jesus, to lay down their life. One is tempted away, and the other has the best intentions, but is ready to reject Jesus as soon as life, it all gets a bit too tough. What is it to love Jesus, to love God, the way he wants us to, not the way we think love is? This reminds me of a wee story uh, Haddon Robinson shared as a famous preacher. I'm sorry, I've shared it before, but I don't think I have. But he was a lecturer and he taught students at theological college and he was before his students and he asked them to raise their hands if they all thought that God loved them. And like a shot, they all put their hand up and said, yes, God loves me. Great. The next question he asked, right? Keep your hands up if you love God. Unsurprisingly, all the students kept their hand up. This was a Christian theological seminary, of course. They had their hands up and they're sitting thinking, what next? What's the point here? Hadden, uh, they looked back at him. And then he asked them, now, what if loving God meant, what if loving God equaled was the same as loving your neighbour? Love your neighbour equals love God. The arms started to get a bit tired a lot quicker. A few of them came down. What if love your God what if your ability to raise your hand to that question depends upon how you treated the person in the front of you in the queue that time where they were determined to get every coin out to get the right money and there's a big long queue behind you and everyone's talking. What if your ability to raise your hand to say yes I love God depends on how you treated the rubbish waiter or the waitress the last time you had a, a meal that was bad or they got the wrong order or just poor service or how you responded to that person who pulled out in front of you in a car last week nearly cut you off they made a mistake they might have got flustered you might have given them a dirty look you might have growled in your car under your breath what if loving God equals loving our neighbour? I should say, what if loving our neighbour equals loving God? 
That's just a wee list I came up with. Here's Jesus' list. And this is from Matthew 25. And it's a moment when Jesus uh, is talking about the final judgment, when he returns again, when the Son of Man returns. When the Son of Man returns, he says, he will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. And again, we have the shepherd motif again. To those on his right, he says, I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. Naked and you clothed me. Sick, you visited me. In prison, you came to me. And they respond, Lord, when did we see you like this? Truly, truly, Jesus says, when you did it to the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. And it goes on to those on the left. You did not do these things. Lord, when were these, did we see you like this? Truly, I say to you, Jesus said, as you did not do it to one of these, least of these, you did not do it to me. We are not saved by works. We know that. We're Protestants. It's the clear spirit of teaching as we begin Christian life. We're not saved by works. But our works are the love we show is the result of being a true follower of Jesus, it seems. And the love of others the way he has loved us, that matters. And by the way, again, I do not stand before you even hinting that I am doing well with either of these lists. The words of Jesus remind us all that even when it comes to a nice and fluffy word like love, and we take the time to read God's word for real, use your brain, examine it, challenge to love is exceptional and make no mistake that is a task that is left for his disciples show your love of God by loving each other we don't show our love for show we don't show our love for others in a measured way just so it isn't inconvenient we show our love to others in a real way like Jesus in a sacrificial way a way that's often hard, not easy, inconvenient. I think if we accept what Jesus has done for each of us for our salvation, and we accept it daily that is, not just one wee moment in our life, and that's when it was all fixed, no. When we come to him daily with gratitude for his love through Jesus, then we are made right with God. And we will be with him. And he is our shepherd. And we are saved. But make, make no mistake. We are challenged to love. And that is no small. No safe. No comfortable thing. It's hard. And it needs his help. So be on the lookout. We are to be on the lookout. Think about the week ahead. For opportunities. To love others. Challenge yourself to love for real those who God has placed alongside you. And watch as your faith in God actually deepens through that process. I'm going to leave you with one wee story just to finish. It's a wee story I heard about a young man who uh, was at theological college. And don't worry, it's not me. Um, he was training for the ministry. And he was in a bad way. He was in a bad place. He didn't feel close to God at all and he just felt he wanted to pack it in go back home he felt a complete fraud and he felt he shouldn't even be thinking about doing ministry never mind being down training for it so he went to his mentor and he mentor and he shared this with him and his mentor said to him one thing or he asked him to do one thing he said i hear you i get it i, I know how you're feeling he said before you throw the towel in do one thing for me. Just try one wee thing. Come back to me this exact same time next week. 
But between now and then, spend that time doing nothing except treating everyone you meet as if they are Jesus. Everyone you meet. Just love them as if they were Jesus. As if they were the actual one who died for you. Sacrificed everything for you. A young man still lived with his parents. He said okay and he went home. And the first person he met was his mother in the kitchen. Doing the dishes. Working away. And he went up beside her. Lifted the towel. And started to dry dishes. And he asked her mum how her day was. How she doing? How her week was? He asked her about her feet. Her feet had been given her bother recently. And he listened to her as he dried dishes alongside her. And then his dad came home from work and he flopped down on the sofa, wrecked. The son got a cup of tea, brought him a paper, asked his dad how his day was. And he listened to the real struggles that his dad had in work. And it dawned on him, the very first people he came across who he tried to treat like Jesus, it dawned on him that he had been so caught up in his own struggles, and his own concerns, his own issues, been totally ignoring these two people that were living alongside him and supporting him and guiding him in his life. And so for the whole week, this young man tried to see everyone around him like Jesus. It didn't always work. But he came back to his mentor the week after and he said, thank you. Jesus loves me. I want to serve him for real. I want to love him for real. And of course this young man was renewed in the faith and continued in his ministry. Loving others is hard work. It's not easy. Loving others the way Jesus loved us may never be truly achievable. But we are called to love others the way he loved us. And as we try that, as we do that, we will be shown what it is to serve him. Let's try it. Let's allow the love of Jesus to take grip in our lives. Let's allow the love of Jesus to shine out of our lives to God's glory. As we strive to love him, as we strive to love others. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the directness and the clarity that we often need. We so often um, have our own principles in life and go about life without... Uh, being checked and your word calls us up short and the words of Jesus even though they're so clear and they make sense they call us up short Lord so we hear that today we ask you to help each and every one of us in this building to learn more what it is to love Jesus and to love him for real may you guide us as we endeavor to love others the way Jesus has loved us <coughs> We know it will be hard, but Lord, you can help us. Your Holy Spirit can guide us and help us as we do that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Scripture can be very challenging, and the words to love seem very raw to us when we feel so far away from so many. If you have been challenged, this is a time where we can now respond as I invite you to stand as we affirm or reaffirm our faith in our God as we recite the Apostles' Creed together. So I invite you to stand now. I believe. I believe God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We come now to our time of prayer when we pray for each other and for the world around us. And our response to Jesus, Lord of life, we pray in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. And so we pray to Jesus who is present with us in eternity. We pray, Jesus, light of the world, bring the light and peace of your gospel to the nations, to Ukraine, to Nigeria, to Afghanistan, to Yemen, to all those places where there is conflict, large or small. Jesus, Lord of life, in your your mercy, mercy, hear us. Jesus, bread of life, Help us to give food to the hungry, to those who only know, want, and need. (coughs) Help us be generous in response to the generosity you have given to us. Nourish us all with your word. Jesus, Lord of life, Jesus, you are our way, our truth, and our life. Be with us and all who follow in your way and follow through your word. Deepen your appreciation, deepen our appreciation of your truth. Fill us with your life. Jesus, Lord of life, Amen. 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 Jesus, good shepherd, you give your life for the sheep. Cover the straggler, bind up the injured, strengthen the sick, and lead the healthy and strong to new pastures. Jesus, Lord of life, hear us. Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life, we give you thanks for all who have lived and believed in you. For those who have gone before us and strengthened us in the faith, Thank you for those who stand for you despite persecution, despite ostracism, despite embarrassment. And we pray for those we pass the faith on to. We pray that for all of these people, may you raise us with them to eternal life. Jesus, Lord of life, may your mercy hear us. And as we gather our prayers and praises into one, we are bold to pray before God's throne. Our Father. Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we come now to our final hymn, the final time of praise, with hymn number 583. Jesus my Lord, my God, my all.
As we finish our service of worship this morning, may the God, the Almighty, may the merciful Lord Jesus, may the powerful Spirit, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless us and keep us. And we have words of commission for this week. We go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.